I was hanging out in my garage the other day reading this dictionary with pictures, like men do, when I came across this peculiar word, vallis marineris. So naturally I thought, could a ratchet strap really cut me in half? Now, if you're from 1852 and have no clue what a ratchet strap do, it's basically a big strap that ratchets. They're mainly used for hanging decorations from the ceiling, grabbing things from across the room, <gasps> or securing ungrateful forced visitors from leaving. But this video is all about trying to cut myself in half with one. The common problem with ratchet straps is that they secure things in place but don't cut them, especially across a wide, flat surface like a trailer or table. So to really test the cutability of these straps, I need to first make a custom squeezing fixture. I figure if I make a triangle, flip it upside down, and place a person on top, I'll then have a triangle with the person on top. As for the fixture design, I can't just use a table because a lot of force is lost in the east to west direction, and I need all of the force to be in the north and south direction for maximum destruction. So I decided to go with the design that's been around since the dawn of man. Imagine the small tape is the item being squeezed, let's call it the head. If I pull on the straps at the base, you can see the head experiences maximum shrinkage and no force is lost because friction isn't real and it can't hurt you. I then spent some hours in a professional modeling software drafting up this masterpiece, which I didn't use at all and decided to wing it, but you get the idea. And after a visit to my favorite harbor and unloading the fruit from the Home Depot tree, I started putting it all together. <laughs> I only used 2x4s to build this thing because joining two 2x4s together makes it a 4x8, which is like super strong. And after 93 screws, 3 stripped bits because I was using the wrong size, and 8 2x4s, the people squeezer was finished. I hit the top part of the fixture with the landlord special and connected the ratchet strap to two crossbars at the base. You may notice the two crossbars are mounted at different heights. Was this some sort of genius design decision to balance forces? No. But before we start crushing random items, I can't actually cut myself in two with the ratchet strap, as getting the poop literally squeezed out of me and then dying would be kind of embarrassing. So I needed something that would simulate a person, and I set out to ponder my problem at the pasture when suddenly an idea hit me like it was staring me in the face. I bought this cat a leg bone to simulate my own leg, but if you look closely, you'll notice there's no skin on the bone, so I needed to add some, which is where this powdered flesh made of retired law enforcement personnel comes in handy. Now, I've never made ballistic gel before, so I had to consult my favorite cooking show to see how to make it. Hello, and welcome back to Cooking with Current Concept. I'm your host. Today we've got a delicious dish ready for you. We've got a soft but firm ballistic gel with a crunchy beef bone in the center to simulate a human leg. Now unfortunately on the back of this bag they have communist measurements like ounces, but I refuse to use those. Hey Alexa, what's nine ounces in feet? First, we're going to take roughly one millicubic foot of water and boil it to exactly 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we pour that water into another container because this one looks nicer. Then stir in a completely arbitrary amount of gelatin powder, just however much you feel. It will then take way too long for the gelatin to actually mix together, and at this point you may think of finding the nearest bridge, but like my grandpappy always said, I'd rather hang on than hang off. You know when your dog just pooped? That's kind of what it smells like. Like it's hot, it's steamy, it's disgusting. And once it's finally mixed together, pour it into your mold for s Wait a minute. I don't have a mold. Now I'm more of a chill guy, not really a fun guy, so I have zero knowledge of making molds. I started by measuring the bone and then sifting through my cardboard box collection for one that I could cut up. I wanted the mold to be round because it's emulated my leg, and I used blue infused paper towels as a muse, which left me with a perfectly round mold. I then used a non-lethal gun to administer hot bonding fluid to the inside seams of the mold, and lined it with tin foil so the harmful 5G cell towers couldn't hurt it. Next I laid some fat beads on the base of the mold, which should make everything waterproof and keep all of the gelatin inside. With the mold finished, I put on some gloves to unwrap the yucky bone and place it inside, making sure it was perfectly centered using a tensioned cable like one you might find at a radio tower. Finally, I started pouring my well-mixed ballistic gel into my high-quality mold and immediately noticed a big issue. Oh. Uh. It's not waterproof. No. There was nothing I could do but stand there and watch as my mold relieved itself of the ballistic gel back into the bucket from whence it came. Unless there was something I could do. I 
quickly swapped the bone to its new plastic home and poured as much salvaged gel I could find into the container. After scooping off the excess bubbles for my bath later, it appeared I would now be testing the strength of a compound fracture victim against the ratchet straps, which was close enough. While that was solidifying in the fridge, I was frigidly solidifying the safety features of the Squeezer 5000 so I don't accidentally catch a hook to the noggin if anything went wrong. Okay, I've got four things to ratchet in half. A one inch wooden dowel, a watermelon, a two liter soda, and a loosely exact replica of my leg. Since this thing is basically a saw, I measured where I wanted to cut my wooden dowel and made sure to account for blade width. I strapped the dowel down, and after making sure that bad boy wasn't going anywhere, I began cranking in the garage. You can see the dowel flexing, but it got to a point where I physically couldn't ratchet it anymore. So I figured I'd release it and swap to this much larger ratchet that should give me more leverage and a lot more power. I should mention that the dowel is trying to be squeezed in half over only 5 inches of space, which is incredibly small. I can easily jump on the dowel and it has no give at this distance. Even at 20 inches apart, the dowel flexes but won't break, and my front of the napkin calculations say I'll need upwards of a thousand pounds of force to break this thing. And with the big pappy ratchet installed, I tried to break the dowel in half again. I thought it was just going to break in half, not launch into the ceiling and take my security deposit with it, but it was pretty cool. We cut something with the ratchet strap. I just, I just invented a saw. A really, really crappy saw, but a saw. Moving on to the delicious green orb, the result was pretty expected, but it tried to attack me twice, which I thought was a little uncalled for. From a sickly sweet sphere, we move on to a sickly sweet cylinder, and after preparing it to Mr. Bond's liking, it was time to see how much juice we could get from this squeeze. It instantly made the entire garage smell like a cheap tropical vacation, and it politely left some insides in my garage door for me to drink later. It was finally time to test out my leg replica, and I cut some extra skin off to perfectly match my own leg. The ratchet strap immediately cut through the ballistic gel, but the bone remained intact even with me using as much force as I could. I was afraid I was about to send a hook into the stratosphere, so I released the bone and widened the gap that I was squeezing across, which should theoretically reduce the amount of force I'd need to break this thing. I started cranking it again with all my might, but you can see the bone only bends, not breaks. I even grabbed a metal bar and put it through the ratchet handle for more leverage, but I really started thinking about the strength of 3 8 inch plywood, and this video isn't about testing the strength of my skull against a 200 mile per hour metal hook. That's next week's topic. So like any good scientific experiment, I decided to move the goalposts and now we'll be testing if a ratchet strap can cut your leg in half if it was partially amputated. Okay, partially amputated leg. Well, okay. <laughs> All right, I may have cut a little too much, but how was I supposed to know that bones are hollow? Oh, it's hollow. So let this video be a lesson. If you're out there with a half amputated leg, be very, very careful around ratchet straps. Otherwise, you're probably fine. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you wanna see more.